Hi guys, I'm Buddy Lona, also known as the Creative Globetrotter, and I'm traveling the world since 2014, an ongoing mission to share you my travel experiences. This is a travel guide how I did travel from the west to the east coast of Canada, what was a part of my 2015 world tour. An incredible journey with stunning landscapes and mountains, inspiring cities, famous highlights, and local wildlife. This is part 2 of the Canada trip. In this episode I'm telling you about how to travel East Canada, the Ontario and Quebec provinces. Also in this part there's a co-host and my travel buddy Miguel de Vries to join me up to Ottawa. In the last episode you can see we traveled from Vancouver Island up to Calgary because of the Great Plains after Calgary. 3500 kilometers of grassy countryside can be a bit boring. So, we took the plane from Calgary up to Toronto. Toronto is by far the biggest city of Canada, with an impressive skyline. You can take the ferry to Toronto Island Park to see the amazing skyline, and visit the island itself. You haven't visited Toronto if you don't visit the Toronto Viewpoint, the CN Tower. With its 553 meters, it is the highest building of Canada. Up to 2007, the highest building in the world, before the Burj Khalifa in Dubai broke this record. Beside the CN Tower, there is so much to visit like the old train yard. Jonge Dunda Square. Well, buddy, you have really fun with this. Anyway, the docks you can visit, the old city hall, the new city hall, Chinatown, and again, no hockey. But we saw in the Washington Center the only Canadian Major League Baseball team, the Toronto Blue Jays. After a few days in Toronto, we took a train to the Niagara Falls, one of the main attractions of Ontario, or of Canada anyway. The train is from an American company Amtrak and rides from Toronto to Buffalo, New York State. Just before the Canada-US border, don't forget to get off the train, because otherwise you end up in the United States. Since the 19th century, local and European immigrants are fascinated by the waterfalls and from that day, thousands of people visiting this main attraction each year. There are three different Niagara Falls. The Bardo Real Falls, what is a part of the American Falls on the American side and the most famous one are the Horseshoe Falls. The border is exactly in between those falls. Of course, you can visit the falls up close. We decided to visit the falls from the tunnels and from beneath. As you can imagine, the amount of water is so big, the spray from the water makes you totally soaked wet within seconds. That wet, my camera didn't work anymore. The Niagara Falls are very beautiful, but the area around can be a big tourist trap, with a lot of bars, casinos and a lot of entertainment. So we decided to leave, as soon as possible, back to Toronto. By bus we travel to the next destination, to Belleville, and from there to the tiny place of Hillier, on Wind Edwards County. We stay for a couple of days with Andrew and Jonathan. Jonathan I know, just like Curtis and Monique in the first part, from the summer camp in Switzerland in 2010. And we stay in this amazing metal house. They just built this house and we were the first visitors. Prince Edward's County is located near one of the five great lakes. Lake Ontario is one of them. For Dutch people, the lakes can be very cold, but Mikael give it a try. Prince Edward is the relaxing countryside with its vineyards, with Belleville is also known as the Sir James Whitney School, a school for deaf people. Jonathan works here, so he gave us a tour. Sir James Whitney, the founder of the school, has been buried in Belleville. His gravestone contains ASL, American Sign Language. From Belleville, we took the train to Ottawa, the capital of Canada. 
We stay in a prison hostel. The hostel is national heritage and they turned an old prison into a hostel. From Parliament Hill you can visit different old buildings. We visit the Parliament building and its tower with a nice view on Ottawa. Ottawa is actually a compromise to being the capital because of the English and French speaking community. Toronto is English and Montreal is French Canadian. They decide to choose for Ottawa. The city lies exact on the province border. The Ottawa River separates both provinces of Ontario, what is English, and Quebec, what is French. An interesting fact was that our king and queen of the Netherlands was visiting Ottawa. We saw the escort during nightfall. In the evening we enjoyed a light show at the parliament building on Parliament Hill. This was also the last day I spent with my time with my travel buddy Mikael. It was time for him to go home. For me? It was time to leave Ottawa and traveling further east to Quebec City. Quebec City is the oldest city of Canada and from North America. It gives you the feeling you are in Europe again, with the typical old buildings, squares and streets. But for a long time the city was a stronghold for the French speaking community. Why there is a French speaking community? Here a short version. The French discovered new land in the Americas and built their first settlement near the St. Lawrence River. There were a lot of battles and wars with the English. Eventually, mid 18th century, the French surrendered and the English took over. During the American Revolution, the English were afraid Quebec joined the rebellion of the American states. So, they give the French speaking community more rights, what includes the language. Canada versus USA were at war in 1812, and it helps give the Canadians a Canadian identity, what also includes the French part. The French identity is so strong nowadays, even stronger than in France. For example, the words. In France, they use the word stop for a stop sign. In Quebec, they prefer the word arrêt, because stop reminds more of the English. I mentioned hockey a lot in the Canada episodes and I got the chance to see the final of the Canadian Hockey League, the second tier below the famous NHL. From Quebec City I get the bus to Saguenay. Saguenay is very known of its native parks and fjords, for example Parc National du Fjord du Saguenay. The village is around Chicoutimi and Lac saint -Jac. From there, it was the final part to reach the east coast of Canada to Tadoussac, also famous of the whale watching and its scenery. From Tadoussac, it was time to travel back to Saguenay, back to Quebec and travel to my last city, Montreal. Before I left Tadoussac, I took the ferry from Tadoussac to Saint Catherine. This ferry is for free because there is still no bridge on the road 138. In Montreal, I jumped into the Francofolie Festival, a festival with a lot of dance, music and mostly French-based language. Montreal is the biggest city of the French speaking community. And there are a lot of things to see. See the skyline from the hills around Montreal, the Notre Dame of Montreal with its colorful architecture, St. Helens Island and its biosphere, what was a part of the World Affair Expo in 1967, eat poutine, fries with cheese and gravy, and see Olympic Park. During these days, the World Championship Soccer, or where we say football, for women was organized. And what a coincidence! It was Canada versus the Netherlands. The final score of that match was 1 0. After Montreal, I traveled to Boston in the USA. The amazing trip from the west up to the east coast of Canada came to an end. And so is this episode. Thank you for watching and please subscribe for more travel guides. If you have any comments or you want to contact me, post below or go to my website, thecreativeglobeproduct.nl.